Vayigash, telling the truth slant. When Yaakov hears from his sons that Yosef is alive, the verse says, he did not believe them. Why didn't their words feel true? He had been waiting 22 years to hear this news about his beloved son, Yosef. But when he finally hears it, he rejects it. What the brothers say to their father is simple. Od Yosef chai. Yosef is still alive. Rashi writes that when Yaakov heard the words of his sons, Yaakov's heart went away from believing these words. I think the Torah is telling us something about words, that they are limited and don't always hold the power to communicate. Sometimes we just can't hear plain words. When the 19th century American poet Emily Dickinson read in a newspaper about a friend's husband who had passed away, she wrote a letter to her grieving friend that began, We read the words, but know them not. In another letter to a friend, Dickinson, after her own father passed away, writes, It is too soon for language. In the same way, language was too soon for Yaakov. How does Yaakov finally hear this new information? How does he finally absorb it? It's not through words. Emily Dickinson began a poem with the line, Tell all the truth, but tell it slant. Dickinson was suggesting here that the truth can be communicated, but it must be told slant, indirectly. The Torah tells us the slant way that the truth was communicated to Yaakov. The verse says, And he saw the wagons that Yosef had sent to carry him, and the spirit of their father Yaakov was revived. Rashi says this means that the Shekhinah, which had separated from him because of his grief, rested upon him once again. In other words, Yaakov could only be ready, be spiritually whole enough to know the news that Yosef was alive, not from communication through words, but when he was given a nonverbal sign, in this case, the wagons. The wagons were telling the truth slant. Rashi quotes the Midrash, the wagons were a sign from Yosef to remind the father of the topic they had been learning together the last time before he left the family. It was the section dealing with the heifer that was beheaded, and the wagons were a sign of this. Jewish tradition is so aware of the need to communicate the truth with a slant that there are a few other midrashim about how Yaakov came to absorb the new shocking information about his son being alive without words. One of the other midrashim says that Yaakov's granddaughter played a harp in order to communicate to her grandfather that Yosef was alive. The Jewish tradition places such a high value on this ability, on this gift to communicate without only words, that tradition says that Yaakov gave a blessing to Sarah that she would live forever. Sarah was his granddaughter. The Torah is encouraging us to notice the limits of language in our own lives and bring that acknowledgement to our interactions with people. We learn that holding back words is vital when studying the laws of Lash and Hara, for instance. And it's a primary, it's, and finding other ways to communicate is always something to consider. For example, sometimes simply sitting with someone who is sad in silence can offer so much comfort. This can be one of the greatest gifts we can give someone. Thank you.